So the key to understanding how um, financial statements are impacted is understanding debits and credits, which accounts are debits and which accounts are credits. Now, as you may recall, this table shows us the normal balance of accounts. So like for expenses, the normal balance is a debit and it will increase if you debit it. So this idea of what increases and what decreases each of the different kinds of accounts is what you're gonna be practicing. But first, let's just pop through and look at everything. So assets. Assets include your bank accounts, equipment the company owns, vehicles, loans to others. Loans to others meaning that maybe the company does um, a loan for the employee. They loan the employee $1,000 because they have to get a big car repair and they can't afford it. Something like that. Um, also employee advances. If you do payroll advances, somebody needs a draw, that would also be considered a loan to others and would be considered an asset. Fixed assets are special assets that are considered long-term because they have a life of more than one year. Usually these things stay on the books for quite a while. So fixed assets are a type of asset and that's specifically equipment, vehicles, and leasehold improvements. So anything that we'd put in the fixed asset area. So when it comes to fixed assets, most CPAs have a depreciation rule. You might not know what it is and you need to find out. There was a safe harbor ruling that passed some years ago and the safe harbor ruling luckily declared that the fixed asset, as far as the IRS is concerned, fixed assets are those things that cost $2,500 or more. Now the important part of this is that the total cost of a fixed asset includes the cost of the thing, the shipping freight of the thing, right, getting the thing delivered, and getting the thing installed. So a new server, you might have expenses of the IT guru coming in and setting the server up for you, which can take um, quite a bit of time. Um, if you are getting a new piece of equipment for an assembly line, probably somebody's gonna have to come in and do the installation. You might need electric, you might need plumbing, right? So all of that would also be included in the cost of an asset. So when you think about fixed assets, remember it's not just the cost of the thing, it's also the cost of getting the thing delivered and getting the thing installed, okay? Ideally, bookkeepers would have a list of all the property a company owns, and so part of your property would be your fixed assets. But the company could have other property that's not considered a fixed asset because it's not a big ticket item, right? So it's a smaller item like a printer. A printer for $500 would not be considered a fixed asset because it doesn't cost enough. And frankly, you know how printers are half the time, they don't last more than a year. And that's one of the rules of a fixed asset is that it should be something that has a, a life longer than a year. So when we're thinking about fixed assets, we wanna keep in mind what the fixed asset depreciation rule is. We'll talk more about that when we get to year on close. We also wanna think about what we're getting rid of, right? So the employees need to tell you when they dispose of an asset. If a monitor goes bad and they want to get rid of it and throw it away, well, one, they want to throw it away correctly, but we also need to take it off our property list, right? But that monitor might have not been a fixed asset because it wasn't expensive enough. But we still want to get it off our property list. A lot of us have property taxes and the property taxes list everything even if it costs $10. The, the, it's a very, very long list, that property list. And that's something that we would go over more at the controller level um, classes. So fixed assets, long-term assets. Most other assets are considered other current assets. Current meaning that they have, you know, turnover in a year, right? So that would include inventory. If the company you're working for keeps inventory, inventory is a special little monster. So that's gonna be a, another class we're gonna teach. Accounts receivable, that's the money that other people owe us, what our clients owe us, that is an asset. You can actually often get lines of credit through a bank um, backed by your AR. So they would let you borrow maybe 80% of your AR. 
your accounts receivable balance. So basically, it's almost like um, a, one of those check cashing places, right? You know the money's coming in, but you don't have it yet. So the bank loans you the money. And then when you get the money in, you're supposed to pay the bank back. For lines of credit, they're supposed to be revolving. You're supposed to take the money and pay it back as soon as you can. Um, so that's accounts receivable, other current asset. And it is an asset and you can sometimes borrow against it. Employee advances, we mentioned that already. So that would be another current asset. We'd expect that that would have turnover in about a year, um, hopefully. So now we're gonna move on to liability. So that was assets. Assets, normal balance is a debit. So if you're increasing an asset, you're debiting it. Liabilities, liabilities, have a credit balance. When you're increasing a liability, you are crediting it. When you're decreasing a liability, you are debiting it. So liabilities, loans, credit cards, line of credit, accounts payable is a liability because that's what we owe the vendors. So that's accounts payable is tracking the amount of money that we owe other people. Um, and so that is a liability. There are current liabilities, those things that we expect to get paid off in 12 months. So accounts payable should be paid off in 12 months, you know, each of those bills. Um, lines of credit at the bank are considered current liabilities because they should be revolving and getting paid off on a regular basis. Credit cards, same thing. We expect those to be getting paid down, paid off um, on a regular basis. And so those are all current liabilities. So what are long-term liabilities then? Because for, for assets and liabilities, we've got current and we've got long-term. So what's a long-term liability? Well, that's something that's gonna be paid off in more than one year. So those five-year car loans, that's considered a long-term liability. Um, the SBA loans that people got during COVID times that are like 1% interest and don't you don't start paying them back for a few years, that's a long-term liability. But what about those PPP loans we got during COVID times? Remember COVID times? Yeah. So we had that PPP money, which was the payroll protection plan or whatever. So what was that? Was that a current liability or long-term liability? Because we expected it to get forgiven but until it is officially forgiven, it should stay as a liability. And the PPP loan information stated that if you didn't get it forgiven, you had a number of years to pay it off. Meaning, until it is officially forgiven, it is a long-term liability. So again, current always means 12 months or less. Long-term always means 12 months or more. We often talk about one year, but we're really talking about 12 months when it comes to long-term versus current. It's not stuck on a calendar year, in other words. It's, it's about those number of months. So that's liabilities. Again, increased liabilities with a credit. Years ago, I was doing bookkeeping and I had no idea this stuff, right? I told you before, I kept that little table, like what I gave you right next to my telephone, and I would reference it every time I had to do journal entries, okay? Which is which, which is what, right? And so while you don't have to understand debits and credits thoroughly to be a bookkeeper, to be an awesome, masterful bookkeeper, you do need to understand your debits and credits and you do need to understand which accounts are debit accounts and which accounts are credit accounts. So those are the liabilities. Now income. Income accounts are credit accounts. So they are increased with credits. And if you think about the relationship between income and accounts receivable, remember accounts receivable, it's tracking the money other people owe us, specifically the money our clients owe us, right? So when we create an invoice, accounts receivable is gonna be debited because it's a debit account that's gonna increase accounts receivable. And since every one of our transactions, the debits and credits must equal each other, that means that we're gonna credit the income account. Debiting AR increases AR. Debiting income, excuse me, Debiting AR increases AR. Crediting income increases income. 
So income reflects the money that was um, earned by the work that we're doing or what we're selling, right? Specifically what we're doing for the client. There's another kind of income account called other income. Other income is income that is not a result of the work we're performing or the goods we're selling. What are examples of other income? Other income is down at the bottom of the profit and loss. It's after regular income and after regular profit, we have all the others. So what is other income? Examples of other income would be like vendor credits, right? When vendors give you that 10% off if you um, pay within a certain amount of time. Rebates, um, some people have rebates where they have relationships with a vendor and they buy everything through that vendor and then once a quarter they get a rebate, right? For for uh, like a, like a um, uh, it's a cash, a cash rebate. So they get a check in the mail with, with the funds. Um, for my company, I get some commissions from technology companies. And so those commissions coming in from technology companies are not directly related to the work that I perform for clients. And so therefore it's other income. I have clients that do a lot of work with metals and they have all this scrap metal. So when they go into the recycling place and sell their scrap metal, the money from the scrap metal sales would be other income because it's not directly related to the work we're performing for the clients or the goods we're selling to clients. So that's what other income is. It's the other stuff. All the income accounts, credit accounts. To increase, you credit. Next topic, expenses. So we have three different kinds of expense accounts. There's the cost of goods sold accounts, expense accounts, and other expense accounts. All of these accounts are on the profit and loss along with income and other income. Cost of goods sold accounts, these are direct expenses. It's the cost of doing, of providing the work to the client. We often hear cost of goods sold with the idea that you're selling products. And so if I had a clothing store when I sold clothing, the cost of that clothing would go into cost of goods sold. It's a direct expense from selling the clothing. In QuickBooks Online, they call it cost of service. <laughs> Just to switch things up a little bit. <clears throat> but there is a cost to providing a service. So a company like mine that is providing services, my cost of goods sold or cost of service would be subcontractors I'm paying to do work for me, direct payroll expenses, payroll, the payroll expenses for the people that are doing the direct work, right? So they're doing, working on client projects, materials, forms, and supplies that we buy specifically for client projects. Um, I'm thinking about things like we buy, we buy certain tax forms. Um, in the past, we bought mandatory posters um, and then resold them to clients. And so those are the kinds of things that we would expect to see in cost of goods sold, directly related to the work you're doing for the client. Cost of goods sold is gonna be wildly different depending on the company you're working for. And sometimes companies don't even use cost of goods sold. Some CPAs get really uptight about the way cost of goods sold is used. So for managerial purposes, it's really beneficial to use cost of goods sold to separate out which of those expenses are directly related to getting the money in and which of those expenses are what we consider overhead, okay? Um, and so for us, for managerial accounting purposes, it's fabulous. We love to use it. Some CPAs, like I said, get a little agitated, um, but th they'll handle it. Don't worry about it. Expenses. Expenses are going to be similar for all industries. When we think of overhead expenses, we're talking about accounting fees and legal and office supplies and dues and subscriptions, right? They're usually, everyone has a very similar group of accounts. They might have different names for things, right? They might call it payroll or they might call it office expense instead of just office supplies, right? Um, but it's going to be similar enough, right? So, so most companies should have a fairly simil similar overhead group of accounts. The next type of expense is <clears throat> other expenses. 
Other expenses, again, not related to the normal course of business, okay? So what would these expenses be? Well, when I go in and clean up databases, I'm also often dealing with historical entries. Um, let's say that there are um, things that are sitting in the checking account that never cleared and we have to back them out. So some of that stuff ends up in other expense. Um, for these adjustments, if it's if it ends up being a debit, it would go into other expense, right? Um, and so these are just the oddball things um, that you normally um, are not are not part of the direct work you're doing for clients, and they're not part of your normal course of business. Um, so what some people use other expenses for, for example, we always have an Ask Jackie account if you're my client. Um, the Ask accounts, that's where you can put transactions if you have a question about them. Instead of setting the piece of paper aside or skipping that one line on a PDF, get it into the accounting system, but flag it that there's a question about it. So we have Ask accounts that we use that for. Other things that could go in other expenses, if you have a a policy that employees can purchase items uh, under your wholesale agreements you have with vendors and then reimburse the company. You might want to have an account in other expenses to track that. You could also have an account in assets to track that. If it happens really, really rarely, then usually we, you know, if they bought shop, if they bought job materials, we're just coding it to job materials, and then when they reimburse us, we're coding that to job materials too. But that only works if it's really, really rare because it's hard to remember who owes you what when you're burying it in the other accounts. And so more advanced accounting would mean that you would have a special account to track if you allow employees to buy things through the company and then pay you back. So expenses increase with a debit, they're debit accounts.